So you're offering us a chance to short this pile of blocks. How? With something called a credit default swap. Many people in the world don't really remember the 1929 stock market crash, but they have heard of it. However, many more people have felt the 2008 subprime market crash. But how many people know exactly what caused it and what actually happened there? This is where the big short comes in. A dramatization of the events leading up to the crash and the fallout for when it happened. A movie that frankly more people need to watch. So how good was the movie really? Let's find out. I'm Mephisto. Like, share and subscribe because this is my review of the movie, The Big Short. It's like insurance on the bond, and if it goes bust, you can make 10 to 1, even 20 to 1 return, and it's already slowly going bust. The Big Short story is told from three different perspectives that kind of intertwine with each other but very loosely. One is from the perspective of Michael Burry, the head of the Scion Hedge Fund. He discovers that something is off with the housing market and he forces the big banks to create a financial device called a credit default swap in order for him to bet against that market. I'm sorry, are you for real? You want to bet against the housing market and you're worried we won't pay you. Yes, that's correct. The second is told from the viewpoint of Jared Vennett, a broker working for the Deutsche Bank who stumbled upon these devices and starts offering it to his customers. One of them is a small investment firm named Front Point Partners, headed by Mark Baum, a savvy Wall Street investor who has a chip on his shoulder when it comes to the big banks. You're saying that at 8% the bonds fail and we are already at 4%? That's right. If they go to 8, it's Armageddon. Yeah, that's right. The third is from the viewpoint of a small investment company headed by two young guys, Charlie Geller and Jamie Shipley, who stumble upon Jared's proposal lying around on a coffee table in the Deutsche Bank waiting room. And as the story progresses, the movie sometimes stops and breaks the motion of the story to explain pretty complicated financial information so we can get a grasp of the magnitude of the drama our characters undergo in the years prior to the collapse and the realization for when it does. These risky mortgages are called subprime. So whenever you hear subprime, think shit. First and foremost, I believe that this movie is one of the best biopic movies I've ever seen. It tackles an issue that hurts every single layer of the society and it conveys a warning message within it that nobody has listened to then and actually since this movie came out. The movie has a harsh and deadly criticism about Wall Street, the banks, and the credit rating companies that were directly responsible for the fiasco and puts the blame solely on their shoulders. They're what? selling ratings for fees. A rating shot. You can afford to make less, make less. Nobody said that. The film is chuck full of great actors, filling out the major roles and the minor roles as well. I have to mention the outstanding performances by Christian Bale as the eccentric Michael Burry was beautiful to watch. Burry was and still probably is considered an oddity in the investment world with him being slightly on the spectrum and Bale does a great job of showing you exactly that. The fact is that these mortgage-backed securities are filled with extremely risky subprime adjustable rate loans. Ryan Gosling is absolutely fantastic as Jared Vennett, a slick Wall Street broker who knows how to spot a great deal and how to sell it to other people. His sales pitch to the guys at Front Point is a stuff of movie magic. And I wish, I just wish I could show you more than seven seconds of it. Aren't you the bank? I work for the bank. I don't think like a bank. Big bank, small bank, I like to make money. All right. But by far the best part of the movie is Steve Carell as Mark Baum. Mark Baum is a really complex character. On the one hand, he's the epitome of counterculture, and on the other hand, a savvy businessman that knows exactly what a good deal is and can smell a rat from five miles away. Hey, there's a bubble. How do you know? Trust me, call Venet, buy 50 million in swaps on the MBS. There's of course much more to the character, but if you haven't seen the movie, I will let you discover it on your own. Suffice it to say, this role is one of the best performances I've seen Carell do, and it really goes to show that a, that a good comedic actor can and should be doing serious dramatic roles. It was at that moment in that dumb restaurant with that stupid look on his face that Mark Baum realized 
the whole world economy might collapse. But besides the three main roles, the movie is stacked with lots of other actors that you know, and most of them do just bit roles in the movie. Whether it's Robbie Margo, Marissa Tomei, Brad Pitt, or Melissa Leo, all did their part to make this movie amazing. Do you have any idea what you just did? Oh, come on, we just made the deal of our lifetimes. We should celebrate. We just bet against the American economy. As a movie, and to make it entertaining and not straight up showing you a documentary, all the characters in the film represent real people that took real advantage of the stock market crash and the housing market crash and made hundreds of millions of dollars from this downfall. And all of them, even the real people that they represent, felt bad doing it. And watching this film, you believe them. You know, once we sell, we'll be just like the rest of them. You know that. We're not the bad guys here. And because this movie is dealing with very complicated financial information, part of the story is telling you complex explanations that this movie has to convey in order to sell its message. So at some points, the film kind of stops and goes into this fourth wall break and presents a celebrity to explain to you in layman's terms what the hell is going on. What am I going to do? Throw all this unsold fish, which is the triple B level of the bond in the garbage and take the loss? This happens several times in the movie and each time the explanation is simple and straight and to the point in order for us to understand and able to follow along with the other characters in the movie. And because the director chose to represent his story this way, some of the characters in the movie itself do the same fourth wall break just to emphasize a point or to emphasize an event, just so it's clear that we have to pay attention. This is what we did that no one else thought of. Not even Bomber Berry thought to short the double A's, but we did. I have never worked in the financial sector, but I was training to do so many, many years ago. In fact, if my dumbass wasn't so lazy, I would have gotten the job in the sector back in 2007. Funny how things work out this way. But having that small amount of knowledge about the subject made me connect to it right away. Probably more than most people, but I still feel that anyone who watches this movie can come away with an opinion about what happened and what should have happened. It shows the harsh reality that most most of us experience without even knowing and it kind of dissolved the mystique about the guys running the show and how smart they really are. And yes, I do refer to the people in Wall Street, the banks and the credit companies. I don't get it. Why are they confessing? They're not confessing. They're bragging. And on a side note, if you ever encountered parts of this movie on TikTok or on YouTube Shorts, and I know you must have, take the time to watch the whole thing. It's entertaining, infuriating, and enlightening. And it most certainly make you double take before signing the dotted line when you take out a loan to buy a house. Zero. And then that happens. What is that? That's America's housing market. I thank you for watching and remember, hope is a good thing, maybe even the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. I'll see you on the next video.